In today's video, we are on part three of terms that uh, I believe every believer should know. When it comes to understanding who we are as sons and daughters of God, what God has done on our behalf, and how you live this Christian life, and what empowers you to do so, I do believe it's important to understand some of these terms that I've been going through. If you haven't watched part one or part two, I really encourage you to check out those videos. Uh, this is kind of a progressive uh, thought process as I go through these terms. And today we are going to look at two terms, the gospel and the functional gospel. And I'll get to this term a little bit later. Uh, it's a term that you won't necessarily see in the scriptures, but I do believe that it's a good way of communicating something that is conveyed in the scriptures. Uh, so when I talk about the gospel, I love to um, let people know that it's a relational gospel. This is God meeting humanity. It's the good news that God met humanity right where we were in our shortcoming, in our failure, in our sin, in our inability to actually reach out to Him, and He reached out to humanity, or met us right where we were, with grace, and He rescued us. We could not rescue ourselves. That is the good news of the gospel. It's called, uh, it talks about bringing glad tidings of great joy, so, or good tidings of great joy. Uh, so this message of the gospel is meant to not only set people free, it's not meant to only give them the enlightenment that God met us right where we are, but it produces a joy within us knowing what He's done. Uh, gospel is, uh, helps us understand that uh, He exchanged His life, the Son of Christ, or the Son of God, Christ, for our death. You see, the wages of sin was death. We were uh, bound toward hell. That's where we were going. We were dead, and then He came and made us alive. And I mentioned that in the video before that Christianity is not about becoming from bad to good. It's about being dead once and now alive in Christ, dead in our sins and alive in Christ. So the relational gospel is the good news that God met humanity with His grace right where we are and He rescued us and He exchanged His life for our death. Uh, what that means is that He took our place on that cross. You and I deserved, that's what we deserved is to be on that cross. We deserve to receive the justice, the, the wrath that was due to us because we had broken the law of God. We wanted nothing to do with the ways of God and uh, we closed our heart off to God at some point in our life. So he took our place on that cross and he received the wrath that was due to us. Uh, what was the wrath? Uh, you know, when Jesus mentioned, Lord, let this cup pass um, before me or from me, what was in the cup? It was the wrath of God. It was the justice of God that needed to be satisfied in order for Him to be able to extend forgiveness. Somebody had to pay the price. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. If somebody had done some horrific crime, raped somebody or murdered somebody or molested a child and they stood before the judge and were all standing there of somebody that was, it was done to and the judge says, well, I'm a merciful, forgiving judge, so I'm going to let them go. We would all demand what? We would demand justice. No, justice has to be served. And so God couldn't just justify mankind without being just, just by forgiving us. Somebody had to pay the price. And that is the beauty of the gospel. Jesus willingly became a man and said, I will take not only their place, but I will receive the wrath that was due to them so that they can receive what he deserved, which is life and favor and blessings and goodness and a relationship with the Father. And so he offered us a new life. He said, I will take your place, I will die on your behalf, and I will extend to you 
a new life, a new heart, a new way of seeing, new ears that can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I will quicken your spirit to make it alive in Christ Jesus. And all it required is us receiving what He has done for us and letting go of that which we have done against Him and experiencing what we call regeneration or being born again, which I shared in the previous video. So that's the gospel in the nutshell. It's the good news that God met humanity right where we are with grace and He rescued us and He exchanged His life for our death and He took our place and He received the wrath that was due to us and now He offers us new life. But many times we receive this gospel and we begin to walk in it, and then something happens that we did not plan. And it happened to the church of Galatia. This is where Paul begins to write to them that they began to embrace another gospel. In Galatians 3, he says, Who has bewitched you? Who tricked you that you were running this race and you started this race by faith. You received the Spirit by faith, but now you are perfecting yourselves in the flesh. That is the functional gospel. In Galatians even uh, chapter 5 verse 7, he says, you were running so well who hindered you from obeying the gospel. So what is the functional gospel? It is an individual who begins to now earn or strive their, or earn their place uh, by what they do. They earn their place. They feel like they have to earn God's blessing, that they have to strive for God's favor, and that they have to do something in order to keep this relationship with God intact. Now you're like, well, isn't that true? I mean, yes, of course, that's what we have to do. And so the spotlight actually gets placed on us now and the pressure and the weight of us and our salvation is upon us. And now we go to earning and striving our place by what we do. I love to say it like this. When you have embraced the gospel, you realize that the blessings of God are given to you, not because of what you've done for Him, but because of who you are to Him. I can receive now freely that which He has given to me. He has blessed me with every spiritual blessing. Those are mine. He has already given to me. I don't have to earn them. I don't have to strive for them. They have been given to me based upon who lives in me, which is Christ Jesus. And so when you start to embrace the gospel and start to what I call uh, drift into the functional gospel, you go from receiving to earning and to striving. And now you're trying to pay a debt off that you would never could pay off. Well, I'm just indebted to what God has done for me. That's great. But when you feel indebted, you start to try to pay off something that you can never pay off by your righteous works. Uh, this thought came to me the other day is that when God placed us in Christ, His blessings, the spiritual blessings, came with that place and that position. And so the conditions are now eliminated. You look at many promises under the Old Covenant outside of being in Christ and you will see if, 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 if almost 330 times in the Scriptures. And every promise you begin to see is conditional. But when you are placed in Christ, those promises are actually in Christ and they're given to you based upon where you have been placed and who you are to God, not because of what you've done. So then we go from transacting with God or the functional gospel causes us to transact uh, or a transactional way of relating to God. We start transacting with Him not realizing that my place and His blessings and His favor and my relationship with Him are all given to me freely because of the gospel of grace that has been extended to me. I don't have to earn my place. I don't have to strive to make my relationship with God right. In fact, Jesus is the reason that my relationship with God is right. I now have peace with God. So it's a transactional way of relating with God. We start to, if I do this, then God will do this. It's attempting, the functional gospel uh, forces us or convinces us that we are attempting to what better our relationship with God. 
I am not trying to make my relationship with God better. Yes, I want to know Him more. Yes, I want to discover more about who He is and who I am. But I'm not trying to make this better because Jesus did that on my behalf. That was the role that He played. I am now to enjoy that which He has done for me, the new life that He has given to me. And so I'm not trying to add to this relationship. I'm discovering the relationship that has been freely given to me. Uh, when you start to drift in the functional gospel, these terms kind of come uh, kind of come to the the front. Um, we exchange the cross that saved us for ladders that perfect us or sanctify us. I started finding myself exchanging confidence in the cross because of the gospel, and my confidence was in the ladders that I was erecting to get me to where I believed God wanted me to go. And start, I started to focus more on improvement than the substitution of Christ. And so I focused more on how I can improve my life as a Christian and better my life as a Christian through the ladders that I erected, through the routines, habits, and disciplines. And I began to lose confidence in the cross. And you will see in Galatians chapter 6 that our boast is in the cross alone. You start becoming the initiator and God becomes the responder and that's never the way that this was supposed to be. When you are a functional, embracing the functional gospel, you start initiating, if I do this, then God, you'll do this. If I pray more, then you'll anoint me more. If I read my Bible, then you'll bless me more. If I give more, then you'll give me back more. And so we start to try to earn these blessings from God by transacting with Him. But God is supposed to be the initiator and we are supposed to be the responder. Remember, we love Him because He first loved us. He sent His Son to meet humanity and we respond to the sending of His Son. And then when you, become func you start to embrace this functional gospel, maybe without even realizing it, you become fixated on destination. I'm here. God wants me here. How do I get there? And so we're striving to get to a destination rather than what I love to encourage people. It's about discovery. This journey you're on is about discovering who you are to God and who He is to you. You'll see that with the people of Israel. When He brought them out of Egypt, He wanted them to discover who is this God that's leading us? Who's this God that rescued us? Who is this God that is bringing us through the wilderness? Who is this God that is feeding us and providing for us? And who are we to Him? Even the angels are perplexed at who is man that you are mindful of Him. And so the gospel, what I, 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 I want to remind you is a relational gospel. God is relational before He's functional. And that you, you relate to Jesus, and that's what Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So I relate to Jesus, and through that relationship, I have access to the Father. It's relational. Functional starts to cause you to earn and strive and transact and try to be better and you start to erect ladders and you start to be the initiator and you get fixated on destination. Uh, so I hope that you understand this a little bit better, why we drift, why it's so easy to become a functional Christian or functional minded Christian rather than a relational minded Christian and where our confidence and our boast is in this, the good news that God met humanity with His grace right where we were to rescue us and He exchanged His life for our death. He took our place, received the wrath that was due to us and He offers us new life. And that's why Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Well, I hope you better understand these two terms as a result of this video. Thank you for watching. If you haven't checked out part one or part two, I encourage you to do so. God bless. Have a good day. Thank you for sharing and thank you for being a subscriber. Bye-bye.